welcome to the video series of data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we will discuss external tables in Azure Synapse Analytics or previously known as Azure Warehouse, Data Warehouse. It's, it's a very critical topic. You will find a couple of questions in exam. I got it. Some of my buddies also got it. So uh, don't skip this. So without further ado, let's start. External table. So the people who already work in the data field, they might hear this term, uh, like they might be aware about this thing or this term external table. And they might be wondering, like, is it same as uh, like external tables which we used in Hive or Eccl? So the answer to that is a similar type of concept in Azure. And the people who don't know what is external tables, in simple words, we can say it's a table which points to the data located in Hadoop, Azure Blob Storage, or Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And these external tables can read write data from these Azure Blob Storage, Azure Storages. Basically, it's just a logical layer on top of that physical data which exists in those uh, Azure storage of uh, data lake or blob. In, like in, um, in some ways, it's, it's, uh, it's very similar to view too. Like view is created on top of a, of a physical table. So basically what happens, like you have a table, you create a view on top of it. Here, instead of table, we creating a like a, a like a table or a, like a logical table which points to the data located in um, in like some storage so there we have a table like from a database but here we are doing it to the files and if you like a, if you drop the external table the data still exists in the storage and same thing goes with the view too like if we drop the view like physical table still exists. So in some ways they're pretty same, but like uh, view point to uh, a, a physical table exist in the data warehouse or database, where here we are pointing to the files in the um, Azure storage. Uh, if we talk about the external tables, uh, type of external tables in Azure, there are two types. One is Hadoop, second is native. So the main difference, both of them, is the type of data source they are pointing to. So Hadoop is basically for Hadoop uh, related files, like for example, Parquet, Arc, and anything coming from HDFS, while native is like delimited type of file types, but not coming from Hadoop or HDFS kind of uh, storage. So Data Lake Gen 2 is uh, Hadoop compatible. So for that, the file type is Hadoop. And the Hadoop file is only like Hadoop external files are uh, external table, sorry. Hadoop external tables are only available in the dedicated SQL pool, while native is um, mainly available in serverless pool, but um, we can like, they can be provisioned in the dedicated SQL pool too. So next topic is like steps to create external table in Azure Synapse Analytics and Believe me, it's it's very critical because I got two questions on it, and as I mentioned, a couple of, of my buddies got two questions, so they were all related to how to create an external table. So there are three steps to create an external table. The first one is the creating the external table data source. Second is file format, and third will be just creating the external table, and that can be done by two ways, like using a regular DDL or CETAS. So what is create external data source means? So create external data source where we are actually creating, um, you can think like we're creating a link to the storage. And second step where we are defining the file format, like what kind of file is it? Is it Parquet? What file options we, if it is delimited, what options we need to pick? And in the end, like we just writing a simple DDL, uh, which points to these file storage, like data source and file format. Uh, the people who are coming from Hive, they can do same, like they don't have to do all these three steps, like they can do everything in the DDL itself. But here we have, uh, for Azure, we have three steps. First, cre 
like create the external data source, which is basically a connect, like providing the information to the to the data, like to the storage. Second is like what kind of file is it? The second is providing information about the file format, and the last is creating the external table, and that can be done through DDL. Uh, that can be done through two ways. One is like writing the regular DDL, like create external table with uh, column names, column type like that, and using CETAS. So don't confuse with CTAS, like that's like create table as select, but this is create external table as select. So the last step can be done by two. So now let's jump into the demo and make uh, everything more clear. Okay, so to save our time, like I already uploaded uh, uh, a data storage, oh sorry, I, I already uploaded a, a, sim, a, a dummy financial transaction CSV file into our, uh, as, uh, uh, into our uh, data lake chain too. So if you go to link, like how, if you wanna replicate it, like I'm going to upload this file and the script and uh, to the GitHub and the link I'm going to provide so you can practice at your own too. But basically what I did is like I go to you, like I'll go to my linked uh, data lake uh, storage gen two and there I created a new folder raw and I just uploaded the uh, CSV file there, which is very simple. You click on upload, select, and I uploaded the financial dummy financial transaction data. Okay, so now we want to create an external table which reads the data from here, basically. So the, as you remember the step one I was mentioning, like we need to create the data source first. So in that step, we have two more steps, I'll say. Uh, they, are they part of that step? And um, they're not always you have to do it. It depends on like, um, how the storage is set up. If it is like public storage, everything is acceptable to anybody. Yeah, you don't need uh, to do these steps. So basically the step is, um, so the step like you need to create a, a master key, which is uh, basically for security purposes. And the main step here is to provide the credentials. And as I was mentioning, if your storage is public, you don't need this step, this is optional. But here, what you're doing is you, basically uh, passing the access key or creating a like a you creating a like a scoped credential where you passing the access key so our external source can access so like our snaps analytics can access to that csv file so here the format is like a first create the master key which is required for uh, encryption and security purposes second is create the scoped credentials. So this, it is very straightforward, like create database, then scope credential and the name of the scope credentials. And as I mentioned, this is to access the uh, storage. So this with entity, like here you see, or oh, it says shared access signature. So it's a SAS. No, it's not a SAS. Still we using the key. Uh, the key. So when I say key, what that means is basically you go to your storage, like you search for your storage account, go to your data lake gen storage, scroll it down, click on access key. So we have two keys here, right? So you copy the first key or second key, whatever you want. And here we using the key. Uh, I don't know the reason like why this, um, the identity is um, a shared access signature here but it works with the key and to create the external data source the syntax is create external data source and then the data source name and after that you need to type you need to pass uh, uh, these parameters so what type of uh, external file is it or external table it is Hadoop and what's the location so as I mentioned like data source is basically providing you the link to the um, to your files so this is Hadoop and location, we all know we can get, uh, we can get it easily. If this is our file, we go here, click on properties and we can copy um, Azure blob file path. You can copy this, cancel, come back, 
paste it here and then passing the credentials so we can this is like pointing to the direction and this thing is okay now you have the access you can access it so that is the uh, external data source financial data uh, data source so data source is created with the name of finance data source so next step if you remember was to define the file format so for that also the it's, a, it's a straightforward like create external file format then you give the name of the file format these are user defines like you, you can give according to yourself so based on your naming convention or your organization naming convention use that and there you tell like what type of file is it what kind of format you want so we are reading a delimited file it's a csv so it's a delimited file and the format options are okay terminator is a comma and the first row start from the second because um, if you know not, like in csv our first row is basically a header so that's why they're ignoring it if you don't pass it like it will consider that as a record too okay and the final step which i was mentioning is writing the ddl so till here i think like it's very straightforward for anybody just creating an external table passing the column name type and here comes the things which we defined in our last script so we pass the data these are the parameters which we need to pass so data source which we created here second file format which we created here and oh, sorry i will go back for the location like if you see here like we are not passing the whole path this is basically we pointing to that um, that storage and after that we have to pass the uh, exact file location and you can like um, you can um, even you can pass the folder too if you want to read multiple files here I have only one files but in if you want you can do the same okay let me show you this like how it look I've already executed this but let uh, I'll redo it but I want to show where you can check all these so if you go here this so in our dedicated SQL rules there are two things external table and external resources and external resources you will find external data source and external file format okay if you expand this external data source and external file format as I mentioned I already created it and similar thing I've already created this too so let's do let's drop these So I'm going to drop our data source. Let me run this. Uh, one second, what's the error? Oh, so first we need, like, because it's used by an external table. So I'll first drop the external table so we can see how to do. Okay, let's go drop. So we're dropping the external table. Okay, now we can drop the source. and we can drop the file format too perfect so if i do a refresh like there won't be anything here and same thing here like if i refresh it no external table okay now if we go here sorry my bad this is script let me close these drop ones okay uh, so one thing like uh, we already created the master key so if you rerun this like if you run it once and you want to rerun again you'll get an error that master key already exists and same thing is like you already created this scoped credential with the name of ADL, ADLS credential so you'll get an error you, if you want to like uh, switch to a new key then you might you can create it or you like you can do one more thing you can drop these two too and create it I'm not going to do it but just I'm putting that uh, like just telling you guys so here like select this so this is going to create our external data source perfect if I refresh this we got it and same thing this is going to create our file format if I refresh this 
Yeah, we got it. And now, if we go here, we can create our table. So this is the final step. And I'm using the regular DDL, but I mentioned like we can use CT, C E T A S too. And I'm going to sh um, give you one example for that too. Awesome. And now if we refresh this, we got this. And if we do this, perfect. We got the data. It's a dummy data. Don't, it's like nothing, not original. You can figure it out from the account number, check number and all those. It's a dummy data I'm using. Okay. So this is how, like this, this is uh, the three steps which we need uh, when we are creating an external table in Azure Synapse Analytics. And the last piece I want to talk about is uh, CTES. Um, and if you remember my slide, even if you're doing with CETAS, these two steps are required. It's not like you, these are not required. So just keep that thing in your mind. So here, like everything same, uh, everything is pretty same except like you providing a select statement after that. And we are reading from a file, so open row set is the default way to do it. Uh, I'm, this is an example, I pick it, uh, I pick it from the Microsoft document. Uh, if I run, it won't run because I don't have this location and these data sources and all, but I just keep it to show you guys like how we can do. So like basically external create table, table name, then you pass the location, similar to if we go here, this is the same. Then data source, you need to create a data source file format, which is same here too. And the things get different is from here, where you actually pass a select statement to create it. So as I mentioned, like the last step can be done by two ways, using regular DDL or using CETS. Uh, so don't, don't get confused in the exam if you get CETS um, and think, oh, we can't, like, is it correct? Like, um, is it the right option or not? If it is CETS, yes, do it. And sometimes they, they, they confuse you by giving uh, like C, CTS, which is like create table, and that's not the correct option. Uh, so that's all for this video. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned for the other videos. And